All right, here we go. The last time we spoke to Johnson Johnson CEO Alex Gorski in December, his gigantic healthcare conglomerate was on the defensive. The company had just been accused of selling baby powder that contained asbestos, known carcinogen, and then covering it up for decades, something my research said was just simply not the case. Stock, however, did plunge from 147 to 133 in a single day, kept falling until the whole market bottom in April. At the time, I told you the self was overblown. Even if the allegations were true, J&J had already lost $40 billion in market cap, and that's just not right. Even the lawyers suing them over this said that. Now, lately, the stock has finally started to get its groove back, as it should be, up more than 5% since our last interview with, with this Trukorski, and up almost 13% from the Christmas Eve lows. Now, j has had a series of terrific major announcements this year. Partying with Apple used the new watch in a cardiovascular health study. Their nasal spray for depression is Provado. Used to be esketamine. We'll talk about that. It just got a thumbs up from the FDA advisory committee, meaning it's likely to be approved, and probably quickly. And two days ago, we learned about the company acquiring Oris Health. It's a surgical robotics company. I've had it used on me. It's good for $3.4 billion. There's a lot to like here, so let's check in with Alex Gorsi, the chairman and CEO of Johnson Johnson, get a better read on where his company said, Mr. Gorsi, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, Alex. Hey, Jim. It's great to be All here. All right. Thank uh, you. Alex, I've not seen J&J on a roll like this in a long time, and I know you've been running for a long time. You know, I've been a big supporter from the day you started. Well, for years, J&J. But there's a series of things, whether it be the s now the new drug, right. whether it be the, the, the device, or I, I tell you, the watch. You're the one that's, you're talking about millions of people that could be helped from this stuff. Just kind of give us the panoply here. Sure. Well, Jim, it couldn't be a more exciting time at Johnson & Johnson. You know, over the past few weeks, first of all, we ended 2018 with great results, right. solid performance across our core business, mid-single digits, double digit on the bottom line. But even more importantly, since then, we've announced a number of really important agreements that are going to end up impacting patients, consumers, and frankly, our patients for the next several decades. Now, you announced a few of them. Yep. You know, let's start with the one, the, the good news that we just got with the FDA this past week. As you know, there's more than 5 million people in this country who are suffering from severe treatment-resistant depression. And unfortunately, as a result of that, almost 40,000 suicides are committed every year in this country. And there hasn't been anything new in almost 30 years. And to finally get a new compound that offers hope for these patients, that goes to work in a in reasonably short period of time, and also has good durability, and offers them real hope, and that's going to be a sketamine, we could not be more proud. No, it, will it be used at a point of ideation, or would you go to a doctor's office? Well, of course, you'll need to see the physician first. Right. But then once they are prescribed the product, they can be treated then by a healthcare practitioner. Okay. And immediately you'll get a few doses, but then after that they'll be treated literally on like a weekly basis, a bi-weekly basis thereafter. Will teenagers be able to use it? Because it's the leading cause of death for teenagers. Well, we're studying it across a range of patient populations as we speak. I don't know if people realize how important this is. It's a people, very, it's a, you know, clearly a huge unmet medical veterans. need. All of us probably know veterans, we know family, yeah. we know friends who have been afflicted by this. And so to be able to bring something out, we are just, you know, so excited about it. Well, you should be. I'm, I'm proud that you're doing it because we, my daughter's a counselor in this area. And there hasn't been anything new, just like you said. And they're just desperate. They and are. And we got to stop the suicides of these younger people. We absolutely do. Okay, so tell me about the watch. I've been a big believer that someone is going to take this watch and really develop something that is so useful. And it looks like you're doing it. Well, Jim, one of the most exciting parts of my job right now is to see the technology that's usually equated with California and the West Coast and whether it's AI, machine right. learning, and you know, robotics, and you're seeing it more and more being integrated into healthcare. And so with this remarkable partnership that we have now with Apple, where we're taking uh, this technology built into the iWatch to help detect things like atrial fibrillation or when you get a heart fluttering, earlier because we know that there's over 35 million people around the world that suffer from this condition. And if we can detect that earlier, we can get them the right medication. We can help them be compliant on these medications over a longer period of time. Ultimately, we're going to save lives. And I think it really shows how some of this new technology is coming to healthcare, new, innovative, unique ways that, frankly, we couldn't have even imagined just a few years well, ago. Do you think uh, through artificial intelligence you'll be able to monitor a pattern? And if the pattern deviates, the doc you could go to the doctor and, uh, look, this is the leading cause of heart attacks. Heart attacks are preventable. Absolutely. That's exactly Stroke what we're talking too. about here. We're talking about algorithms right. that are built into the watch, that are monitoring it real time, and it can detect these anomalies, you know, far before something really manifests itself that the patient's going to recognize in, the terms of some, in terms of symptoms. I think it can save uh, billions of dollars in health care, too. Not, you know, look, lives are obviously what matters, but this is what we need is preventative. Now, uh, the Oris acquisition is unbelievable because this robotics is the way things are. 
<laughs> and the best hospitals have been using this. But most of them, you could expand this around the world. Well, another great example of how this technology is fundamentally changing the way we're thinking about right. healthcare. You know, today, less than 5% of surgeries are done with a robot or digitally. In the future, we think that's going to be significantly greater. And what we're so excited about is just as technology has changed the way that we drive a car, you know, think about right. it. You know, whether you pull up your map system, whether you see that light go right. on if you start to change lanes, think about that in surgery where suddenly a surgeon can go in preoperatively, get you utilize imaging to right. help him or her really navigate their way specifically to the lesion. They can actually get guidance. Uh, and we know that that's going to lead to better precision, right. better outcomes for the patient, and frankly, better value overall for the healthcare system. Yeah, I mean, when my doctor uh, used it, what he said was the mistakes, it, it, it's, I'm not saying anything's mistake free, but there, there are a huge number of mistakes. And this ends most of them. Well, absolutely. You know, to think of it, for example, with RS, their Monarch system, which is used for something called bronchoscopy. So, you know, now, if you happen to have a lesion or a tumor right. at a very far out section in your lung, they, of course, would have to go in through mm -hmm. minimally invasive surgery to do a biopsy sure. or to better diagnose what, what you have. So imagine we take a tree and turn it upside down, and that tree is your lung. We can run this wire down through the system, way out to the outer end of the leaf. Think of it almost like the acorn. And once we get there, we can do a biopsy. We could use imaging in the future to actually you know, determine what kind of a cancer it is. Or we could deliver a therapeutic, perhaps a new kind of immuno-oncology agent you know, to that specific legion. Or we could go ahead and cut it out. Those are the kind of things that are being made possible by this new technology at a company like ours. It's so exciting. I, I, I did see you last time. Anything talc update? There's really not much since we talk, right? No, look, we, we put safety and quality right. first in all of our products. And, you know, we believe in the more than 100 years uh, of experience with that right. product. And, and we'll defend it appropriately you right. know, through I the mean, courts. I know that there was a company that recently filed bankruptcy, but, but it was, seems like, look, you guys are... Um, you have your position. The position's been fought over for a long time. And you've done, you know, more than your fair share, I think, in trying to explain what's really going on there. We do. You know, what we think is most important is the people get the facts. We continue right. to educate. And, uh, look, we, we think this will play out in an appropriate That's way. That's exactly how I felt. You gave me the facts. I looked at the facts from the other side. And you know how I've concluded. But I'm just one person. Absolutely. I'm not a jury, but I'm one person. That's Alex Gorsuch. He's chairman and CEO of J&J. &J, and I hope you understand all the exciting things that they're working on. They are a true health care company that's saving a lot of lives. Bad money's back. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.